All right, so let's look at the second example, defining the tangent line to parametric curves. So we have f and g are differentiable functions, and we want to find the tangent line at a point on the curve where y is also differ a differentiable function of x. And the chain rule gives us dy dt is equal to dy dx times dx dt. And if dx over d or dx dt does not equal zero, we can solve for dy dx. And so this gives us the derivative dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. And of course, dx dt is not equal to zero. So what this does is we can find the slope of the tangent line. Okay? And we don't have to and, and this is without eliminating the parameter t. Okay? We keep the the derivative is in terms of t. All right. So, let's take a look at this example. Now, you know, you, if if this is the first one you're watching, you can go watch my uh, first example was this problem. I, this is the work where I worked it in the video. I've already done that video, so you can check that out. Uh, so let's look at this one. It says find an equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find uh, dy dx. So remember, dy dx, okay, dy dx is equal to uh, dy dt over dx dt. So the derivative of y with respect to t over the derivative of x with respect to t. Alright, so the derivative of y with respect to t, that's the derivative of this. So the derivative of sine is cosine plus the derivative of sine 2t, well, that's sine 2t times the derivative of what you're taking the sine of, so times 2. All right. And then the derivative of x with respect to t, well, the derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. And then the derivative of cosine 2t is negative sine, so that would be a minus, and then the derivative of what you're taking the cosine of derivative 2t is 2. All right, so there's your derivative. <clears throat> so what I need to do now is I need to plug in the value of t so I can find the slope of my tangent line. Well, they don't give me t. They give me an x, y coordinate here. Okay, so what this does is this tells me that cosine t plus cosine 2t is equal to negative 1. Okay, so where did I get that? Well, here's x is equal to this, cosine t plus cosine 2t. Well, what's x? x is here. It's negative 1. So I set this equal to negative 1 and now I need to solve this equation here for t. So let's do that. <clears throat> so this is cosine t plus, now notice this cosine has an angle of t, this cosine has an angle of 2t. So I can use my one of my double angle identities to rewrite this as 2 cosine squared t minus 1 equals negative 1. And so setting this equal to 0, that's going to give me 2 cosine squared t plus cosine t equals 0. See, the negative 1's cancel out. All right, so solve this. I'm going to factor out a cosine t. And so that leaves me with 2 cosine t plus 1 equals 0. So cosine t equals 0 or 2 cosine t plus 1 equals 0. So cosine t equals negative 
one half. <clears throat> All right, so from this equation here, I get t is equal to, now remember cosine, remember the graph of cosine from 0 to 2 pi? one, negative one. Remember, here's cosine. All right. So where does cos where is cosine zero? It's zero at pi over two and it's zero at three pi over two. All right. So this would be pi over two and three pi over two. All right. Now, I need to solve this one. But what I could do is I could take this pi over 2 and the 3 pi over 2, and I could just go ahead and plug that into here to see if it works. And if, if one of them works, then I don't even need to worry about solving this one. Okay, because I will have found t. Remember, whatever value you use for t, it has to satisfy both of these equations. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and solve this just so you can see. We're going to solve it without using a calculator. Uh, so what we need to do is we need our reference angle. So cosine t, and I'll use a bar over the t, just a line over the t, to let me know that's my reference angle. And remember, the cosine, sine, or tangent of a reference angle is positive. So that's why I changed this to a positive. But this cosine t equals negative one half. Remember, that tells me that my solutions are in quadrant two and quadrant three. Okay, because remember, cosine is negative in quadrants two and three. So my reference angle, well, cosine t one half, that's what? That's 60 degrees or pi over three. That's my reference angle. So what I need now is t is equal to, well, I need the solution in the second quadrant and the solution in the third quadrant. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my reference angle of pi over 3 to get my second quadrant angle. See, I need t. My reference angle is pi over 3. So t is pi, see, pi minus pi over 3, which that's going to be 2 pi over 3. So that's 2 pi over 3. All right. And now let's get the third quadrant angle. So I need this angle. Well, remember, my reference angle is pi over 3. There's t. So t is equal to pi plus pi over 3. And that's going to be 4 pi over 3. All right. So my possible values of t is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. Okay, that's, that's my possibilities for t. So what I need to do is I need to take each one of these and plug them into this one to make sure I get one as an answer. Okay, so let's just start out with pi over 2. All right, so let's see if pi over 2 works. So I have y equals the sine of pi over 2 plus the sine of 2 times pi over 2. All right, so y is equal to the sine of pi over 2 plus the sine of pi. Now, remember sine, I've got 2 pi, pi, 3 pi over 2, and pi over 2. There's 1, negative, negative 1, and remember, this is the graph of sine, so we can get the values. So here I get y equals, now the sine of pi over 2 is 1, and then the sine of pi is 0, and look at there, I get 1. So I know my t value is this one. That's the one I'm going to use. 
All right, and and just to show you, you you know, if you were to would have tested another one first, look at this. <clears throat> Let's just say we would have done the three pi over two. That would give us y equals sine of three pi over two plus the sine of now look at this three pi over two times two that's going to give us three pi and if you look at the sine function there's two pi pi three pi over two and pi over two draw that again so there we go so this is y equals and then the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 plus uh oh the sine of 3 pi well that's what that's pi units over right it would be here so it would go up and it would come down that would be 0 so you can see that gives us negative 1 when we plug in 3 pi over 2 so we can you can see how that doesn't work okay all right so so that just shows you that shows you what to do okay so you have to solve for t if they give you a point you have to solve for t and remember that you may get multiple values of t like we did here, but you've just got to take, just start taking them and plugging them into the other one. See, I use this to solve for t, so I've got a, the solutions I get, I have to plug into this one to make sure it satisfies this equation. And pi over 2 worked. Now, some problems, what they'll do instead of giving you the point, they may say, okay, find an equation of the tangent line to the curve at to the to this curve for t equals pi over 2 they may just go ahead and give you t some 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 equations may do that okay but we know that we're going to use t is equal to pi over 2 that's what we're going to use to find the slope see that's what we're going to use to plug into our derivative here to get the slope of our tangent line so I'm going to erase, erase all of this work here so I can work up so I can work up here I'll pause the video while I do it all right so now let's go ahead and find the slope so the slope is this derivative here evaluated at pi over 2 so that's cosine of pi over 2 plus 2 Oh, I'm sorry. Look at that. No, that's right. Cosine this should be cosine. All right. Well, made a mistake. Well, we, we caught it when we needed to. All right, so that's two uh, cosine of 2 times pi over 2 over negative sine pi over 2 minus 2 sine 2 times pi over 2. All right, so when we plug all that in, that's basically going to give us 0 plus 2 times negative 1 over negative 1 minus 2 times 0 and that gives us 2 as our slope. So here's our slope, here's our point, so now I can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right. So that's going to give me y minus 1 equals 2 times x, uh, my goodness, that should be x1. Alright, so that's going to be 2 times x minus a negative 1 is plus 1. And so I get y minus 1 equals 2x plus 2. So y equals 2x plus 3. And there's the equation of my t.
tangent line. All right, so this video was kind of long. I hope it helped. Uh, check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.